Now, springtime means daffodils, lambs, freesias, which I love, and warmer weather. But for a lot of us, it also means hay fever. Our next guest believes it's possible to have a hay fever free spring and is back to give us some advice. Breathing coach Dina Sinisa. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mel. Really nice to have you in here. And this Thank is something you. I'm very interested in because my husband suffers badly and one of my sons okay. is from hay fever. So, correct breathing techniques actually saved your life. Can you give me a bit yes. of a background? What did you learn? Well, um, a little bit of a backstory. Five years ago, my hay fever and asthma took a turn for the worse, and I was hospitalized or admitted to the hospital twice in one week. So I felt like, oh, I, I do need to make a change. Mm. I, I went to another doctor for a second opinion, and he was the one who picked up that I was sighing a lot. So I was sighing 15 times, I guess, in 15 minutes in mm -hmm. his clinic. So he recommended that I do a buteco course to help fix my breathing because he says it's my breathing pattern that's, you know, my breathing habits are not yeah. um, good. And that helped me and um, I've been symptom free for five years. Yes. Wow, so, okay, so yes. it really helped you. It did, and so the biggest thing that I learned is that I was over breathing. So a lot of us are over breathing, which the technical term for it is hyperventilation. Right, okay, yeah. which we understand that, that term, hyperventilation, not over breathing though. So how much yep. air do we really need? Well, not much. So per breath, that's why I've got this bottles, per breath is 500 ml. Mm -hmm. This is 250, a 250 ml bottle together right. is 500, so that's one breath. And you can imagine it's just a small breath. It's a very small breath and I can even fit these. So if these were my lungs, they already hold the air that I need for mild to moderate activity. Okay. And these fit into my chest cavity nicely without me having to expand my chest. Very big. So that's just this, um, and it w we don't know if we're breathing 500 ml. What does 500 ml look like? Yeah. Looks like you're not breathing at all. Just a slight movement in your diaphragm over here. So that's, um, yes, that's the amount of air we need. Because, that is interesting. Yes, a lot of people are breathing two to three times more than that. Well, we think we should be taking big breaths because that's what we need. So, uh, yes. so we're breathing incorrectly, essentially. Yes, we are. So we are breathing bigger, so we're taking in more air than we need and faster, slightly bigger and slightly faster. So I use the word slightly because it's not, um, it's not easily seen to an untrained eye. Mm. But I can, like, um, breathing coaches like me can see that we are breathing more. So that's, those are two things, breathing um, bigger or breathing slightly faster. So how could you tell? So you'd be able to see if, if I, you know, somebody's breathing yes, incorrectly, yes. Well, probably most people are. And yes. what about hay fever? How is that connected? Is it really possible to cure it? Well, not, not cure. Maybe mm. I wouldn't use the word cure. I'd use the word manage because the predisposition is still there. But then if you breathe right, then you don't need to have the symptoms. And so um, breathing right, can help it in three ways. One is that it lessens the, the inflammation because when you, we breathe too much, when, when we hyperventilate, our, this is a bit technical, it's our right, do it. carbon <laughs> dioxide levels go down. That predisposes us to um, inflammation and a lot of histamine going into our, um, flowing into our body and, and that makes us you know, have that allergic reaction to hay fever. The second is that um, we tend, people who hyperventilate tend to breathe through their mouths. Mm. As long as your lips are parted, you would be breathing through your mouth. So some people have an open mouth mm. posture. So then you'll be taking in more air than if you were breathing through your nose because that's a bigger hole than your nostrils, right? And the third thing is that um, breathing better, you know, I was saying that people who hyperventilate breathe two to three times more than healthy breathers. So can you imagine you're breathing in two to three times more allergens, pollen, dust. And so your body's saying, I can't handle that. But a third of that I can handle. I won't react if you just breathe in a third of that. Wow. Can you give me a demo of how we should be breathing then? Is this something we can practice? Well, I can do a demo. I could do a demo of what, how we should not be breathing. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be breathing through our mouths. Mm -hmm. And we should, so poor breathing means Shoulders are up, going up and down, and the chest is going up and down. Good breathing is when you're just not moving at all. Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu was saying that a perfect man breathes as if he's not breathing at all. So you're just sitting there, hardly any movement, slight movement in the diaphragm. So I'm breathing right now, but you don't see my chest moving, nor my shoulders, 
maybe just a slight movement in my diaphragm area. Wow. And have you got a quick tip for us on how do we can kind of try to avoid hay fever? Three things. Breathe through your nose because that filters out all the allergens and also reduces your breathing volume um, by at least 20%. Mm -hmm. Second is have a upright posture. I'm trying to keep my posture upright now because that allows your diaphragm to move. And the third would be to relax because when you relax, your breathing naturally becomes gentler, calmer, slower and smaller. That is awesome advice, Dina. Thank yes. you so much. Very, very helpful. Yes.